entrepreneur relief is uh, available when uh, an individual is uh, disposing of business or part of the business it is also applicable on cessation of the business or disposal of shares meeting certain conditions like other reliefs in this case of relief there will be no exemption no deferral rather than this particular relief will impact on the rate of cgt as we know that the rate of cgt is either 10% or 20% or 18% or 28% depending on the type of asset disposed of and depending on the availability of basic band but in case of claiming er if you are able to then it will cover first 10 million of the qualifying gain that means the time limit is 10 million of the gain is eligible for 10% tax rate irrespective of the level of income even if a person is higher rate tax payer the qualifying gain up to 10 million is to be taxed at 10% what if if the gain is more than 12 million then the first 10 million is to be taxed at normal 10% and the remaining 2 million at 20% and also remember that this 10 million is a lifetime limit so if you have already utilized part of that limit then the remaining part will be available in order to claim the entrepreneur relief certain conditions must be satisfied and the asset must be owned prior to 1 year of disposal and the relief is not available on investment so if you are selling a business or part of the business and in business there is an investment you cannot get entrepreneur relief on investment if individual asset of the business ceased then disposal must take place within 3 years of disposal and in case of disposal of shares in a trading company so the condition is that the individual must hold 5% shares in the company at least and must be an employee of the company prior to 12 month of disposal either full time employee or part time employee so in case of shares there are two condition which must be satisfied one related to that it must be a personal trading company other is the condition of employment if any of the condition is not satisfied then disposal of shares will not be eligible for er relief now as far as timing is concerned you can just see this the qualifying period of ownership in this particular uh, slide which will be discussed later on now the claim date time limit the relief must be claimed within 12 month of the 31st january following the end of the tax year in which disposal is made for 2019 and 20 this date is 31st january 202 because our tax year starts from 19 6 april 19 to 5th april 20 so take 31st january after that so this is 31st january 21 so the rule says that within 12 month of the 31st january following the end of the tax year so within 12 month it's 31st january 2022 now if you have more than one type of disposal one is eligible for er other is not eligible for er they can they can you can choose that from which you can use the aea and capital losses so deduct the annual exemption and capital losses from the gain which is not eligible for er as they have to be ta taxed then at higher rate either 20% or uh, more than that the easiest approach in dealing with question is that include gain qualify for er and gain do not qualify is to keep the gain separately for example if you have 
qualifying gain 5 million and non qualifying 100,000. Then it is better to deduct the annual exemption from this first and then apply the rate. There is a restriction of ER in respect of disposal of goodwill. Gain in respect of goodwill is not qualified for ER if the goodwill is transferred to a close company and the individual and company are related. That is the individual is a shareholder in the company or an associate of a shareholder. This restriction does not apply where the individual hold less than 5% of the company's ordinary shares or voting rights or hold more 5% or more, but sell the whole shareholding to an unconnected company within 28 days. The individual must hold less than 5% of the acquiring company's share capital and voting rights. And this restriction also does not apply if the individual is a retiring partner. Mr. A sold his entire business and realized following gain or losses. So in this question, a business has been sold and following gain and losses have been calculated. Gain on factory, gain on goodwill, there is a loss on warehouse and there is a gain on investment property. It's an investment property, so it's an investment. All of the assets have been owned for many years. We have to keep in mind the qualifying condition. He also held shares which he sold in an unquoted trading company and realized a gain of 9.6 million in the tax year 1920. He owned 25% shares of that company, means it's a personal trading company and is also partner employee for the last three years. So the conditions have been satisfied too. Capital losses uh, brought forward. So we have capital losses uh, brought forward to 9,000 and uh, also have tra trading profit of 40,000. Calculate capital gain tax for 1920. Let's now solve this question. So there are uh, qualifying gain as well as non-qualifying gain. So first of all, let's uh, identify the non-qualifying gain and qualifying gain separately. So non-qualifying gain and qualifying gain. So investment property is a non-qualifying gain. So its gain is to be covered in non-qualifying category and the gain is 200,000. Other than that, we have factory having gain of 275,000. Then goodwill. 330,000 and loss on warehouse so that is to be offset with the gain. So the gain of the business is uh, 505000. Similarly, trading shares, disposal of trading shares as conditions are satisfied. So the gain is uh, part of the disposal of shares. So we have to see that how much uh, the disposal. So the gain is uh, 9.6 million, but uh, you can see that uh, the limit is uh, 10 million. So you have to identify the balance and the balance is 9495. So the remaining falls in uh, remaining falls in beyond the limit. So we have to report it in the non qualifying category because 10 million limit has been satisfied. So this is uh, 200,000 and 105. So this is 355,000 and 10 million. Now from which gain we have to deduct AEA, so it is beneficial to deduct from the 
non qualifying gain and the capital loss brought forward also from the non qualifying gain in order to minimize the tax liability so this is 284000 qualifying gain taxable gain and 10 million of qualifying taxable gain now as per the rates so we although we have uh, the trading profit of 40000 but if you are using er then uh, even if there is no trading profit and basic band is available the er will cover the whole basic band first so it is like uh, qualifying gain so ignore trading profit qualifying gain is uh, first 10 million multiply by 10 percent so we have uh, 1 million of this and then non qualifying gain and this is 284,000 now it is to be used the next band and that is five six eight double zero so total is one zero five six eight double zero even if uh, the we have uh, the limit in the basic band but uh, as er is more than thirty seven thousand five hundred so it's utilized the basic band and the cgt is one zero five six eight hundred now, as far as qualifying ownership period is concerned, in case of disposal of business, two year prior to disposal, the asset must be hold, business must be hold. In case of shares, personal trading company, and at least two years prior to disposal, and the employment criteria. In case of cessation of business, the disposal of the asset must take place within three years of cessation, and the business must be carried on two years before cessation. In case of EI, EMI share option scheme, Two years period start from when option is granted rather than when shares are acquired. If shares are acquired on incorporation, then the period of ownership of the unincorporated business can be counted towards the two year ownership period for ER on the disposal of shares. What is an associated disposal? ER also applicable to assets owned by the individual and used in their personal trading company or trading partnership provided the individual also dispose of all or part of their partnership interest or shares in that company as part of their withdrawal of involvement in the partnership or company business. If such disposal is taking place, then this disposal is called associated disposal. And for associated disposal, the relief is depending on whether rent has been charged or not for using the asset. If a full market rent is charged, then relief is reduced to nil means there will be no ER relief. But where rent is less than the market rate, the relief is restricted on a just and reasonable basis mr a is a partner in a partnership business since first may 2013 and then retired from that partnership business on first april 2020 he sold his share of partnership to the remaining partner and the gain on this qualified for er throughout the time he allowed one of his warehouse to be used in partnership for a rent, which is 75% of the market rent means not the hundred percent rent charged warehouse have been sold to the existing partner on 1st April 2020 and which result in chargeable gain of 150. Now this is classified as an associated disposal and qualified for ER. But the gain is the ER is restricted and the relief is 
one lakh fifty thousand multiplied by twenty five percent because seventy five percent rent has been charged. So the gain is restricted to thirty seven thousand five hundred. So the gain is one lakh fifty thousand, and ER relief on this is up to thirty seven thousand five hundred is a qualified gain which is taxable at the rate of ten percent.